Good morning, Bud Mormon here again. And what you see with my right shoulder here, or over to my right, is my most recent construction of a dual resonant solid state Tesla coil. I've been building it for two years. Uh, I started on it about two years ago, uh, and, and I always build the hardest components first, and those components were the uh, solid state bridge assembly with the big switches. Let me show you some of those. Last year I finished up a smaller Tesla coil called the Mini Brute, and it uses this IGBT right here. It, uh, it only handles a small amount of amperage compared to this monster here. Here's a comparison between the two. This is the, uh, we're using four of these switches in, in this Tesla coil uh, switching design, and these can handle about 600 amp per piece as a pulse. So, <clears throat> as a result, the maximum current that this thing can handle is roughly between 2,500 and 3,000 amps per pulse. So, uh, there is a tremendous amount of current being used uh, when this thing is, is, is running, uh, it runs at 240 volts, uh, single phase, and only tr and only it only uh, it only uses about 40 amp, uh, 240 volts to run it. And uh, as a result, you'll see uh, what's going on in the film. During the construction of this Tesla coil about two years ago, I started with the uh, H bridge assembly. And I didn't, I didn't really know how to build an H-bridge assembly. And in the film, or in the, in the uh, pictures, you'll see some of the uh, pictures of the H-bridge assembly and the copper bus bar and the capacitors and all the other parts of components that go in with it. And I, I actually copied it from a guy by the name of Philip Slowinski, who had put the picture assemblies the engineering picture assemblies on the internet and I used those picture, pictures to back engineer my assembly uh, about two years ago and this is where I started with this this endeavor. I didn't know if I could actually pull this assembly off or not and uh, I have to give a tremendous uh, amount of respect and thanks to again to Steve Ward, uh, a younger guy than me that uh, lives out in California now who really, really is the backbone to this entire dual resonant solid state Tesla coil uh, engineering design and, and concept. Um, one of the things I'd like to express here is a note to the reader which Steve had written which really falls near and dear to my heart. And it goes as, as follows. Within this page, I hope to give experimenters interest in constructing a DRSSTC, some sort of guidance as to how to go about designing and building their, their own. I should make two things very clear. Designing and building a DRSSTC is not a trivial task. It helps to have some experience with power electronic design. If you don't have any experience there, you will get quite a bit of experience when tackling a project such as this. Even I am somewhat uncertain as to what the best design is and what operating parameters are best. I will try to discuss these uncertainties, but the, really the goal of this page is to look at the more mundane aspects of the DRSSTC design, basically its construction and component selection. From there, the experiment has the foundation to carry out his own experiments and contribute to the new field of Tesla coil research. The actual operation, operational theory will not be covered in any great detail and will only enter when necessary. It is up to the reader to have some understanding of logic circuits, inverter basics, and of course, Tesla coil theory. Now what Steve has said there is, is an awfully huge chunk of information which I did find out firsthand how tough this design and build really was. Building the Tesla coil is not hard. Building the components, building all the hardware, and winding the secondary, and building the toroid for me was a piece of cake. It is the 
it's the it is the electrical component portion of it which uh, which really slowed me down and brought me to a standstill as as far as the construction and I have to thank Steve Ward again when I ran into that brick wall and didn't know where to go and how to proceed I wrote to Steve and he was he was kind enough to answer my emails and 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 help guide me through each of the difficulties that I was experiencing. Steve is not going to, I have to say this, Steve is not going to take you by the hand and lead you down the engineering path. You have to do your own research, understand how to run an oscilloscope, meters, you know, and do all of this electrical hard work, and Steve can guide you as to what may not be working. Um, that's that's the one thing I have to say. Uh, please, if you're gonna if you're gonna bug Steve about your own DRSSTC or a solid state Tesla coil of some nature, do not bug him with how to run a test or a uh, an oscilloscope or a meter or something of that na nature. <clears throat> I started two years ago, just learning uh, electronics on my own, reading books, building projects. Uh, building Tesla coils, building other, I built a smaller solid state Tesla coil first to gain knowledge and to have a basic understanding of how a Tesla coil of this nature really works before I dug into a, a monster of this size. It helps to have that practice. So, and I, and I want to say this, I did not go to school to learn engineering and design or electronic engineering is design. All of my uh, background in, in college and in high school was in mathematics and in business. Uh, so I didn't study this stuff. I just get it naturally. How, I don't know, but I do. And I have a tremendous amount of, of uh, interest in this guy right here, uh, Nikola Tesla. He's, he's the big guy. Uh, if we could only find out uh, get inside of his mind and, and actually what he really knew, well, we probably knew know as much as the guys out at Area 51. So anyway, I move on here. <clears throat> uh, there are some very unique there are some very unique parts to this Tesla coil. Uh, two of which are this toroid assembly is is very unique. A uh, guy by the name of Finn Hammer. Uh, I guess he's from Denmark, and uh, he posted a picture of this toroid on the uh, 4HV website. And as soon as I saw it, I said, I have to build one. i got to give it a try. So I did. It came out great, and it works great. Um, the other thing that came about as a, as, a, as a mere chance happenstance, if you will, is the strike rail assembly on this Tesla coil. Uh, this is a this is an aluminum tubing strike rail. Let me spin this around so you can see the back side. As you can see the strike rail is a is a con, is a constant switchback. There are no joints, there are no intersecting uh, tubes anywhere to cause right angles or to cause any sort of electrical interference. This is a continuous switch back. It comes here, down, around to here, down, back around to here, down, back around to here, down, back around, and stops. And this strike rail works even better than some of the other strike rails I've, that I have built. Um, I am more than pleased with it. Um, it wasn't as hard to build as I thought. Uh, it, and it came about, um, I had built the strike rail wrong. It, it looked like this, but it was built wrong. It looked more like a fence, if you will. And Steve wrote me back and said, Bud, that, that strike rail assembly is not going to work. You've got to change it to the um, spine design, if you will, built almost like the rib cage on a human body with the spine and all the ribs that come around, but don't touch. And I said, well, why not, you know, then I thought about, well, why can't I build a continuous switchback design? So this is what you see. Um, I'm, I'm more than pleased with, with how this Tesla coil works, and uh, I can't say enough about it. I, this, is, this is really, really cool. 
So anyway, uh, I've, I've spent enough time shooting my, my mouth off here with you guys. So let's get on to the video and actually see how this thing works.